What is knitting bore? Knitting bore is an experimental parallel iteration algorithm that does uh, takes my house stochastic gradient descent and puts it on top of a custom framework called iterative reduce, analogous to map reduce, but it's for uh, iterative algorithms on top of Hadoop's yarn. And it's just an experiment me and my partner Michael Gaston Ellen Boland did to to see what that algorithm will look like on top of the next generation Hadoop platform. W what problem does it aim to solve? What, excuse me? what problem does it aim to solve? I mean, what uh, fundamentally, what are you trying to address there? Linear classifiers, doing maybe binary classification with logistic regression, finding the decision boundary between those two is, uh, can be solved with the iterative, uh, parallel iterative uh, uh, approach. And it's used for things like uh, classification, spam uh, detection, mm -hmm. uh, anomaly detection, fraud detection, things like that. I have to ask you, where did you get the name? I, I really needed a, uh, I, I love irreverent names. My master's thesis was, was titled uh, Tiny Termite. Um, <laughs> so I, I have a history with, There's with a trend uh, yeah, going irreverent on. names. Uh. So I needed something funny like that. So I was talking to my coworker, Josh Wills, and I kept throwing some things off based off of Yarn, mm -hmm. which is another irreverent name in Hadoop. And I, there was a paper I liked called Hog Wild. So I took the hog, the boar, and a, a knitting boar just sounded funny to me. Yeah. And, and I said, like, well, I'm going to go with that. You know, because this is an experimental. Let's just do something sure. irreverent and fun and just go with it. You have a logo yet? No, no. <laughs> if somebody out there wants to make one, I would love it. Though. It seems like there's a natural evolution that's going to go on there. Um, what is the relationship between online learning techniques and large problems? Um, large problems can be solved in, in a number of ways, depending on whether that can be defined a lot of different ways. But if it's a lot of data, mm. a lot of times we, we to to it becomes a physics problem because we have to touch a lot of disk, and that's why MapReduce was tremendous. Yeah. And we're trying to leverage some of those properties with our new framework to to process a lot of data lo using the locality of HDFS, with our, our new framework, Iterative Reduce. Mm -hmm. And online learning uh, talks about, in, in the context of maybe Storm, uh, as the data comes in, processing. So that's a little bit different than what we're doing here. We still mm -hmm. have a batch approach but we're trying to change how the framework works a little bit. So those a little bit, a little bit different. Mm -hmm. uh, Last so. question for you. Now you've been involved with Hadoop for a while now, yeah. right? Are you surprised at all at its growth and some of the use cases that have popped up? Absolutely. When I first started, I thought Hadoop was cool, and I found it in grad school, and I, I, I did it on the smart grid with, uh, with TVA, and it was just something I was really interested in, and, and I feel like I've been like a roadie on the Hadoop a world tour at this point, and I've just kind of <laughs> got to watch it. Well, like, the, what's the movie um, uh, yeah, with the guy who's the roadie with the, with the rock band? You know, and I've kind of got to watch it the whole way. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's been it's it's been ten times as big as I thought it would have been. You know, I knew it always had potential, but the market really it exploded, and it's been a lot of fun to watch. Right. I knew it when. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, thanks for being with us. Appreciate thanks. you taking the time.